hello. Welcome to my holiday rom-com recommendations video. Why don't you sing a verse of Oh Christmas Tree and come join me for some smutty holiday fun. So, as you can see, I have on my ugly Christmas sweater as is tradition. I am become the Christmas tree. I even have a star on top. And usually I bust out this sweatshirt for my December TBR. However, this year I'm wearing it for a holiday rom-com recommendation video. So today I have a list of all the holiday rom-coms that you should check out this December if you want to feel in the festive smutty mood. Starting off, we have Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey, one of my favorite romance authors, and earlier this year she released a holiday rom-com and I'm so excited for it. So it's two weeks before Christmas and all through Manhattan, shop windows are decorated in red and green satin. I'm standing alone in front of the famous Vivant department store when a charming man named Adam asks my opinion of the decor. It's a tragedy in tinsel, I say, unable to lie. He asked for a better idea with a twinkle in his eye. Did I know he owned the place? No, he put me on the spot. Now I'm working for that man, trying to ignore that he's hot. But as a down on her luck girl with a difficult past, I know an opportunity when I see one and I have to make it last. I'll put my heart and soul into dressing his holiday windows. I'll work without stopping. And when we lose the battle with temptation, I'll try and remember I'm just window shopping. I love the little poem on the back. You get an idea of what's going on. It's grumpy woman ex sunshine man. Yes. Next, I have another one of my romance queens, Katie Robert, with gifting me to his best friend. And this is part of her Touch of Taboo series, and this is about a man and a wife. And for Christmas, for his best friend, he's like, here is my wife. I feel like the title is self-explanatory, but you know, he also joins in, so there's some crossing going on, you know? The next book I have to talk about is a brand new release, and this is Dipped in Holly by Dana Islay. I have been loving reading Dana Islay's books. They're just so perfectly spicy, and this one is a holiday book about Holly, who just got dumped, and the owner of the bar picks her up, and it is set during Christmas time, and the owner of the bar is a silver fox. Yes, it's a novella. It's supposed to be like super spicy, super steamy. I'm living for the aesthetics of it. Just go read it. Next we have In A Holiday is by Christina Lauren. I feel like Christina Lauren have the rom-com market on lock. So of course I can't not mention them. It's the most wonderful time of the year, but not for Maylin Jones. She, she's living with her parents, working a dead end job and has made a romantic error of epic proportions. Worst of all, this is the last Christmas that her family will spend in her favorite place in the world, which is their cabin in Utah. As she drives away for the final time, she's melting down. She throws out what she thinks is a simple plea to the universe. Please show me what will make me happy. The next thing she knows, tires screech and metal collides and everything goes black. And the next thing she knows, she's on a plane for Utah bound to repeat the holiday over again. With one hilarious disaster after another sending her back to the plane, May must figure out how to break free of the strange time loop and finally get her true love under the mistletoe. We love a good time loop Christmas book. Next is Royal Holiday by Jasmine Gilroy. Vivian Forrest has been out of the country a grand total of one time, so when she gets the opportunity to tag along on her daughter Maddie's work trip to England, to style a royal family member she cannot refuse. She's excited to spend the holidays taking in the British sights, but what she doesn't expect is to become insanely attracted to a certain private secretary, his charming accent and unyielding formality. Malcolm Hudson has worked for the Queen for years and has never gave a personal private tour, until now. He's intrigued by Vivian the moment he meets her and finds himself making excuses just to spend time with her. When flirtatious banter turns into kissing under the mistletoe, things snowball into a full-on fling. Despite a ticking timer on their holiday romance, they are completely fine with ending their short, steamy affair on New Year's Eve. Or are they? Next, we have The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. When Chef Charlie Goodwin gets 
hit on the head in the LA set of her reality baking show. She loses a lot more than consciousness. She also loses her ability to taste and smell, which is vital to her job as a judge. Meanwhile, Charlie's identical twin, Cass, is back hold, trying to hold her own life together at their hometown, running her family's bustling bakery, and dealing with her ex who won't get the memo that they are over. With only days until Christmas, a desperate Charlie asks Cass to do something that they haven't done since they were children, swap places. But temporarily trading lives proved more complicated than they imagined, especially when a rugged firefighter, Jake Greenman, and gorgeous physician's assistant, Miguel Rodriguez are thrown into the mix. Will the twins' identity swap be a recipe for disaster or does it have all the right ingredients for getting their lives back on track? It just sounds so like cutesy holiday rom-com Hallmark movie. Love it. Next, I have a holiday novella series and the two that I'm gonna highlight from the series because I love their titles the most are Elves with Benefits and One Night with a Nutcracker and they're both by Janet Ashton. So, Elves with Benefits. Ryan Shepard doesn't care about Christmas. The only reason he's returning to his over-the-top Christmas-themed hometown is to sell the house that he inherited from his late uncle so he can go back to the city and the promotion that he is chasing at work. Fortunately, there's a flaw in his plan because apparently, because according to the town's Christmas cop, there's a moratorium on selling houses during December because it's bad for the aesthetic of the town. She's slapping an alarming number of tickets on Ryan's front door for being in violation of holiday decor. And one of them is even for unsportsmanlike Christmasing. To top it all off, the Christmas cop looks like a sexy red-headed elf. And it says, warning, Christmas in Ranger Falls, which is the name of the series, is more naughty than nice. These stories are over the top festive with merrily ever after is guaranteed. Novella length for a quick holiday binge read. And then one night with a nutcracker. So Jake Shepard is ambivalent about Christmas and the Christmas teen town that he grew up in. But when he finds out that his late uncle left him an old barn and acres of land. His decision is to return home and build a dream golf course. However, when he arrives, he finds out he has a squatter, an incredibly sexy squatter with wavy blonde hair, green eyes, and a free spirit, and a herd of goats. Sutton hates him, and apparently evicting a non-paying non-tenant and her goats weeks before Christmas is grounds for war. So it just seems like over the top fun and like ridiculous, but that's kind of what you want during the holiday season. This one isn't exactly Christmas themed, but it is like winter themed. So we have The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgenthaler. So when Graham, Bar when Graham Barnett named his diner The Tourist Trap, he meant it as a joke. Now he's stuck slinging reindeer dogs to endless string of resort visitors who couldn't interest him less. Not even the sweet, enthusiastic tourist in the corner who blushes every time he looks her way. Two weeks in Alaska isn't just the top of items on Zoe Caldwell's bucket list. One look at the mountain town of Moose Springs and she's smitten. But when an act of kindness brings Zoe's into Graham's world, she may just find out there's more to the man than meets the eye. Okay, next we have A Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday. And it's described as a modern Christmas fairy tale. So Leo Ricci's already handling all he can between taking care of his little sister Gabby, driving a cab and being the super of his apartment building in the Bronx. But when Gabby spots a princess in a gown outside of the UN trying to hail a cab, she begs her brother to stop and help. Before he knows it, he's got a real life damsel in distress in the backseat of his car. Princess Marie of Eldovia shouldn't be hailing a cab or even out and about. But after her mother's death, her father has plunged into a devastating depression and the fate of her small alpine country has fallen on Marie's shoulders. She's taken aback by the gruff but devastatingly handsome driver who shows her more kindness than she's seen in a long time. When Marie asks Leo to be her driver for the rest of her trip, he agrees, thinking he'll squire a rich miss around for a while and make more money than he has in months. He doesn't expect to like and start longing for the unpredictable Marie. And when he and Gabby end up in Eldovia for Christmas, he discovers that the princess who is all wrong for him is also the woman who is his perfect match. Cute. Okay, then this last one just seems like super crazy fun. So it's the Fake Santa Apology Tour by Julie Olivia. Birdie May has a weird secret. Short-term relationships with good-looking Santas are kind of her thing. And Nicholas Ryan is the good-looking Santa she doesn't really need in her life. They say the spirit of Christmas finds you on holiday vacations, but instead she runs into the only person who could get her Christmas lights twisted, Nicholas. A man who she hasn't seen in 20 years and who she never wanted to see again. Except now she's her hot bartender, complete with a silver fox beard, a twinkle in his eye, and looking a lot like her kryptonite. Jingle belling Santa Claus. It's five days until Christmas, and Birdie is stuck in a snowy town straight out of a Hallmark movie, and her ultimate goal is to avoid the Grinch who stole all her Christmases and pretend that the chemistry is simply just the magic of Christmas in the air. I mean, this just seems like kind of over the top fun. 
so yes okay that is it for my holiday rom-com recommendations i hope that you have a merry and jolly holiday season have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one Thank you.